everyone. It's out of our pause and rock. And as soon as the holidays ended, we start immediately like with an interview. So today we have Demu from I don't want Winter Sun, Megadeth now. And first of all, how are you, Demu? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Just trying to get used to today. <laughs> Of course, I mean, you know, you are being under the spotlight a lot of while in this couple of uh, months, especially. And before just jumping to the, 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 the most uh, granted question, you know, like the most, uh, I want to just to get to know better your musical background. So how that demo started, you know, like even before in uh, enjoying Winter Sun. So even before that. Like so I started playing. Right. Yeah, I started playing guitar when I was about 12. Um, I had some older friends who picked up the guitar and then that got me interested as well. So we kind of learned together and that was that was a nice way of learning when somebody would some yeah. someone of our French group would learn something, then the others would have to learn it as well. Yeah. So it's it very uh, inspiring. Uh and then uh, pretty soon I started getting into like uh or actually I was into metal music already before, but then once I picked up the guitar, then there were some other friends who played also blues, and that kind of got me into playing in in like blues jam band. And then then I realized that playing in a band was like really my thing, and I, I loved doing that. Exactly. And then uh, I aspired to to get into a, a real band. And then uh, okay. uh, my first band was uh, in two thousand four, Imperanon. Imperanon, yes. Um, and then soon after Winter Sun, and then yeah been 20 years in winter sun touring and making yeah. making music and now uh, and now uh, Part of your smack life. right now now uh smack bound since uh since a few yeah. years yeah. we've made a couple albums with that band and uh there's been some other projects uh um yeah. during the years as well but <laughs> uh now now it's mega yeah it's a it's a matter it's, it's a lot of pro i mean uh, all of these projects i mean uh we, we have just to you know to make a timeline <laughs> Just okay with this for the second, because like you, you mentioned, you've been influenced as well by blues, because of course there's people in the metal scene that might be influenced by jazz, by blues. Of course, blues it's one of them. I think they give you like a kind of a, as well technical background and improvising background as as guitarist especially. But growing yeah. up, uh, Temu, there was some really guitarist even in the blue in the blues scene, or even could be I don't know. In, rock pop scene whatsoever that we don't care which was that you really like um i don't want to say like copying but like uh you know like mirroring like inspiring just not not i want to be him you know just kind of going in that direction sure yeah a lot of a lot of uh different guitars that i that i was influenced by um to mention some of those blues players then uh, eric clapton uh, Joe Bonamassa, even even but some of Joe idea. Satriani's kind of bluesier playing uh, was was really cool, um, and then of course a lot of metal players uh, and a lot of the kind of uh, um, technical kind okay. of shred players, the the okay. classic names John Petrucci and, yeah. and you know Steve Vai, uh, Sean Lane, yeah. and then maybe some less known names but but well known in the guitar community like mm -hmm. Alan Holdsworth and yeah. and uh, Brett Carr said, and and then at some point I got into more like fusion um, music and and hey. like Sean Lane, but also Craig Howe was a big influence for sure. Uh, Gautry Govan, when I discovered Gautry Govan a long time ago, that that was like it felt like mind I, you blown. Know, it was really uh, <laughs> because you know a lot of guitarists have this Gautry Govan name going on, or even if they play, I don't know rock punk it's got a little going there it's a little, a little bit for everyone yeah you know it's a different name and a different musician with different uh you can say more like say it's more technical you know, like the famous g3 whatsoever we know the g3 right. it's a you know it's like uh, the woodstock for guitarists i think yeah yeah for sure <laughs> yes but as well going from like you mentioned bonamassa amazing guitarist completely and going through to have the good through government so all this stuff of because not, they're not completely the same going all this all looking into these guitarists of course there's some you know element or something that you, you were mainly look at that style because of course you now you with winter sun and all the other band you create your own 
style. So if you read, would like to just not say, I took that from, I don't know, the true truth of, no, just like describing your own style of playing. How could it be? Just, I don't know, shred whatsoever. How, who would you describe how, you, you know, like the moment when you pick the guitar and just the improvisation moment, just when it's you and then you done. You don't have to compose, just the freedom of, of having the guitar. And this comes this uh, playing, how you describe your way of playing. So that, like, let's say how you they give an adjective to the relationship with your own guitar, because I know there's like almost a girlfriend for guitar. So. Yeah, right. It, it's kind of hard to describe your own style, I find. But and, and I think it's also like ever evolving, uh, evolving situation. You're always kind of getting better, I feel. Um, but um, um, I, I usually try to rely a lot on improvisation whenever it's like possible, uh, whether if, if it's like a, a composition situation, then oh. I, I like to rely on improvisation as well. I play a lot with my ear. Always did that, like you mentioned, with blues that kind of uh, came naturally. You have uh, an trying to learn things you have, by ear. You have like an absolute ear? Like can you say you feel uh, No, okay. no, no. I have a pretty okay relative pitch, but uh, <laughs> but but I uh, don't have like perfect pitch. Um, and uh, yeah, in my style, I I try to pay attention to a lot of things. Like I, I care about phrasing a lot, which I think came from a lot of the the blues and the the fusion guitars, yeah. like uh, the bends and the and the vibrato. But also guys like Marty Friedman, I really admire his style. And and even long before I joined Megadeth, like uh, learned a lot from him. Um, I, I try to pl be uh, somewhat playful in my in my playing and and uh, just have fun playing and not not take it uh, take it professionally, but not too seriously in a way. Um, for for example, I've done a lot of guest solos for this Finnish children's heavy heavy metal band called heavy sours and there you can find a lot of my solos which are like that's a lot of different styles and kind of playful in, in a way yeah, but that's cool though just doing as well things when you you know because for youth it's good to, to get in a closer with music instead of starting with flute sometimes or with piano we have a there is i think that there is more, more you know more difference more choice in the when you want to pick up an instrument and maybe when you were kids really young you were a kid you have the flute that's cool that's it you don't have you can be folk musician that's your path you can, couldn't choose what to develop but as well like um, you said with all these um let's say this, this influence you had so you join really 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 early i even remember it was maybe my 12 13 years old I think we'll be the same age around 87, something like that, 88, something like that. We're the same. 87. Okay, yeah. so we joined in 2004. I think you were barely 14, 15 when you joined Winter Sun. I don't know. Uh, 17. 17. 17, I, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying Winter Sun. Winter Sun. So you've been touring with them. You've been releasing three full lengths, something like that, a lot of EPs. And there's a lot to be said about this band because... Uh, of course, the main focus is uh, how should it be right now, like Megadeth, and this incredible journey, because it's like, you know, like a movie, like a teenager getting a, an amazing bet that we can't say even an, an adjective for them, because they're like that, you can describe it. Because just giving a little bit as well of a uh, spotlight to winter sun, because I think it's uh, always, uh, I mean, it's always good to remember as well, because it's still banned, which is active, let's say to the people, they're not dead, still active. <laughs> I don't want to focus, you know, like in the first album, second album, third album, just once, but going throughout all the evolution of the sound, like uh, as well, the, the, um, the, ly the lyrics that you face mainly, how, how much changed since uh, the first, because of course you joined, but the first album came in in 2012? Uh, Winters and first album came yeah. out in 2004. 2004. I joined like uh, pretty soon after the album came out. Okay, so I mean, how, how long does I mean this journey in the in, in the songwriting in the composition, especially as guitarist, how much how much is changed? So because of course it's going on with the growth, but in the sound, I mean, in sound wise, not only in the technical side as well, in sound wise, how much is changed until the last? Yeah, I mean, 
I don't really get uh, much to say about the winters on production because it's all Yari, who's the main guy, and he's yeah. he's doing all the music. Um, but I, I think his uh, um, his style of composition and his style of production, especially, has changed over the years quite a bit. Uh, and I've gotten to contribute here and there, uh, little yeah. things. But the way that he likes to work is really like uh, he likes to be a hermit and like kind of uh figure things out by himself and then when yeah. when he's kind of ready then he then he lets us know that okay this is what i have in mind and then yeah. with winters and it's always been like this that when when we get active touring wise then it's more of a band project but the music production has been always like uh more of a solo project in a way which yeah. which now i'm really looking forward to being able to contribute more with uh, megadeth as well we're already yeah. planning the pre-production for the for the next Megadeth album, so that's that's really that, exciting. Yeah, that's really indeed exciting, and we're gonna go really, really, really soon. So, in in all this touring with uh, um, Winter Sun, because I'm gonna ask you that as well for Megadeth, so so we can connect this question to later. But uh, mainly, what I wanted to ask if there was kind of um, because of course you did a lot of touring and uh, you know being younger, being older, there has been like the first day that you were like on the stage, not just, you know, like this moment, but real stage with Winter Sun. I mean, how was it? How do you felt to put a fit on the stage, you know, being young and with your guitar? And it's always, you know, I think a big emotion, but how do you remember it? Yeah, I do remember first shows. I do remember the very first show, like even before Winter Sun, like some of oh. the... The, the school parties that I played in, in school band, probably like after playing the guitar for a year or something. And, and I really enjoyed doing that. And then that really carried over then with, with the Imperan and we started playing like a lot of local clubs and bars when I was 17. And then, yes. then with Winter Sun, uh, we started touring when I was 18 and uh, mm-hmm. we, we played a handful of shows in Finland. I, I remember the very first show was in Kai's home down, hometown, uh, um, and I remember going to Kai's place, uh, doing like a road trip and practicing for a couple of days at his home and then then doing the show there. And then then we played, I think, a couple more festivals in Finland. And then pretty soon we already flew to Germany and did this big festival, Summer Breeze, in yeah. front of, I don't know, 20,000 people. Yeah, that was one really of the very first shows. Yeah, that, that was a cool experience. I mean, I like that you picked up Summer Breeze because uh, we were really the first ever festival that I attended was Summer Breeze with Megadeth at the line, which is weird, but it's amazing. Okay. Well, it's, a, it's an amazing festival, Summer Breeze, and especially to, as a, you know, like a, one of the first European festival where you go, it's a perfect place where to launch your career. Just, it's fun. That's uh, that's all I want to say. I, I always say Summer Breeze is home. But of course, Finland, I mean, I don't know what's going on right now with Finland. I'm, I'm having all interviews in Finland, in, in Finnish. We finish. With, that's, I'm going to, I have to move. I'm going to move to this I don't know, probably to Turku, which it's compelling because it's close to the Holland island, you know, so I can go, it's compelling. And there is a good, there is Turku Satanal, a good festival there as well. So okay, okay. probably, I don't know, I'm calling back, but it's a beautiful land though, to grow, to growth. And the music scene is stunning. We have between the underground music and you guys don't know how to, you learn to play in, in, in Finland, you're amazing guitarist singer, musician. I don't know, they teach you maybe to play when you were a kid. I don't know. <laughs> or is in the culture? Yeah, growing up in Finland was definitely, uh, the, the heavy metal culture was always strong in Finland as, as I was growing up. And and uh, yeah, I grew up in the countryside in a village of uh, 5,000 people. So there it wasn't like that many opportunities to get in, in their, like a serious band. But then pretty soon I moved out to the capital Helsinki and then got into the band scene and, and that way met more musicians and, and that, course, that way yeah. was, was able to in, in uh, evolve us as a, as a musician get better yeah but of course it's always beautiful even in the countryside that's it's a, yeah 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 I know it's definitely a yeah. and now beautiful, stable, beautiful country in, in, stable in Switzerland because Switzerland is a beautiful country too but like you really your girlfriend to live there she's really like it tell her to from me she said there's a beautiful landscape and yeah, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world because you have everything there. You know, you don't have to go in there to drive a kind of thousand of hours. You just 
open, there is a lake, there is a river, there is mountains, so for every all of nature, like it's a perfect. But just let's uh, make him back. Of course, like you mentioned, he had as well a, a smack bound, which like you said, your let's say this uh, this band um really like really fastly. Um how we can describe smack because of course people might not like may not oh, look which is this band because maybe we can know Winter Sun, we may know um I don't know, of course Mega doesn't have to need them, but what about Smackbound? So just briefly, like how can you describe them or just a small journey in the, the history behind them? Yeah, Smackbound it started around I think 2014, 15 mm -hmm. as as a cover band first. We we were okay. called Run for Cover and we played uh, local metal covers. Uh, local shows, metal covers, and, and some hard rock covers as well. And uh, this is basically uh, Netta Lauren, the, the singer. She put together the, the group and asked me to to be there as a guitarist. We did some some duo uh, acoustic shows together with her as well. And then then uh, she asked me like who else would be uh, ideal for the band, and that's how we got uh, Rolf on the drums, who I played before yeah. Smackbound. Uh, with as well, and then uh, Tuomas Uli Askari on bass and Billy Tapeldo, all, all uh, <clears throat> really great players uh, who I, I had played before, also with some some other projects before. So that was kind of a kind of a oh, group yeah. of friends um, yeah. make, making music right. together. And then af after playing the covers for a few years, then we decided that let's let's uh, do original music, and that's okay. how we started started uh, composing for the okay. for the first album, which came out in. 2020 uh unfortunately right at the time when the the, the pandemic was breaking out so so we uh, lost our yeah. um record release show that was actually planned on the week where when the when the lockdown happened uh and so that kind of messed uh, messed up the plans for the band at that that point but then we when we couldn't do shows then we just um, started composing for the next album which uh which then came out in 2023 summer oh, and, so and yeah, got, got to play some some more shows then as well. So that's that's basically the story of Smackdown. Yeah. So let's say that 2023 was kind of a busy year for busy year for you because uh, let's say revolutionary, something really like really revolutionary. Because of course, I mean, let's not mean it's not easy that you're just gonna receive a call or something that uh, oh, do you want to play some live with Megadeth? Wait, I heard correctly. Who? <laughs> I would like to ask 10 times, are you sure you're talking about me? Because of course, I mean, just, I have to, because I don't know. I know, I just was, with the, I, was I was mashed. So I was like, okay, what happened? So I don't know. Really, I'm a, I didn't check any interviews, didn't completely. So if I'm hearing from you the first time. So how? How you receive a call, you receive a message, you receive an email. You had an audition. Oh, what happened? <laughs> so. Yeah, so this was uh, um, summer of twenty three. Uh, okay. I got first. I got a first uh, actually Instagram message from Kiko Lurero, who okay. wrote Already, me that, that you knew me. You knew him from before. No, we didn't really know. I mean, we knew oh. of each other probably, but uh, <clears throat> okay. but uh, didn't didn't know personally. So he sent me a message like, "Could could we have a call?" And then. Uh, then it took a couple of days and then we got connected and then we talked on the phone and then yeah he asked if I would be maybe available during the fall and uh, everything was still kind of uncertain and uh, not sure if if I was going to be needed uh, his situation was still kind of open back then and then yeah I, I said that yeah for sure if if I if I can help I'd be definitely interested to, yeah, to yeah. step in and then then we started like doing preparation so they first asked like could i send some audition videos and yeah. i quickly film filmed a couple songs for them to see and then pretty soon after i was talking on the phone with dave mustaine and, and he was explaining more about the situation and yeah. and uh yeah from from the first moments it felt like a good place to be in everybody was like super welcoming and like appreciating my my uh work that i was doing and and uh it was nice to be able to kind of uh um yeah i i put all my other work uh, aside Fine. teaching which i which i normally do i, I just like uh, 
uh, postponed all my lessons and focused on get, getting yeah. getting the the megadeth set list as good as possible with everything and and being as prepared or over prepared if possible mm-hmm. uh and uh and even like probably a week before the tour it was still like unsure if it's gonna actually yeah. happen or not so Absolutely. so not, yeah. but 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 then it happened and yeah i'm really happy about it yeah, and it happened, it happened, it happened that, 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 that with the final statement that we already knew. I mean, that was sure that you are involved now. Like you mentioned, even in the in a further composition of a, a future album, that's big. I mean, because first, I mean, even receiving a phone call from, like a message from Kiko Laura, can we talk? What is going on in my life? You know, so it must be really went really mean really fast for you. Like, okay, one moment it's one kick, one other moment it's the most what, what I'm doing. <laughs> I'll link two phones with two giant. Because I'm not speak, we're not speaking about, you know, like uh, the guitarist in front of my balcony. It's the, the, the musician who made the history of music. I mean, we don't have to explain them my son who is. I think even my cat knows that he's really made the history and Megadeth made the history of thrash metal uh really and being there you know it's like a movie rock star kind of you know <laughs> you just join the band as a kind of in a different way and this because I, I i don't know them personally but i i can really yeah you have always this feeling because if they are still there today still here playing and giving you know because the open the door even to musicians for example they never heard just only to recommendation of a friend it's it's that shows how welcoming and kind and humble they are and especially Mustaine is Davis so and I, I mean your first day meeting him really like okay I'm I'm here okay hi how was it because I can't picture in my mind myself so you can give me an, an idea how it was um we actually met um in a hotel before the Vakken opener, uh, okay. Dave had invited me to to come along to the show and see the show and meet everybody, meet the crew and meet the band for the first time. So, so we met. I think it was the day day before the Vakken show at the hotel and uh, yeah, sat down in a restaurant and had had some coffee and later lunch together and uh, yeah, just like nice hangout and getting to meet everybody and. Because and uh, then did some some practicing in the hotel room as well. So yeah. that was nice. Because then not no, no, forget that the the the, the mega that is not only Dave Mustaine, all the other musicians made the history lament of me. I don't have to mention what they meant because come on, I, it seems like I'm stupid. <laughs> I think God knows. And because so Wagen was your first show with them? Uh, so I just went to see them there. They they uh, okay. they they had Marty Friedman as a guest okay. on the show, yeah, and uh, of course yeah. Kiko was still Kiko was still playing the whole yeah. European tour. But I, I was kind of as a, as a, what they would call understudy at at the time. Yeah. So like Kiko's backup guitarist basically. So uh, so that's why I I went there yeah. just to kind of get to see how how the whole machine works, like behind the scenes um, and on stage as well, and I. I filmed the the rehearsals and and filmed the, the show from the side of the sa- stage to kind of see yeah. how how everything uh, goes on during the show. So that was really educational and helpful. Yeah, and uh, and of course, I mean, because of course, it's now like the first the first live with them is not like on the small venue; it's a packed of hundreds of thousands of people. So probably you've played uh, you already played with the big stage, like we said, some memories, for example. But how does it actually feel? When you are, I mean, you felt like the first time on the, at the beginning, the first time, like maybe it's too much, or maybe I can't do that because it can be because it's, we are human, so it's always an historical band, you're human, but it can it can even be not because you're a professional guitarist. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, um, of course, I had a lot of experience playing big yeah. stages like what can two times before already and and summer priest like you said and and a lot of other shows as well but of course like mega being such a uh, legendary band it did feel surreal uh it yeah. still kind of does i still yeah. have to sometimes many, pinch myself yeah i don't uh, like you but... ever got one shirt of them because i think every teenager wear a shirt of mega at least once so yeah 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 
uh, I mean, I, I definitely like was aware of Megadeth for for a very long time. They were they were one of the first bands that I that I got into when I discovered metal. I, I think that's for for most people, at least my generation or our, our generation, yeah. when they it, when they get into metal, it's usually the the biggest bands and, and Megadeth, of course, yeah, being it, being yeah. one of them. Yeah. Um, but then, about the shows, the the first show that I played with the band was actually Albuquerque yeah. uh, in the beginning of of September, the first show of the U.S. tour, and that was a, a very nice venue as well. We had a, a day there before before the show mm-hmm. for production rehearsals to, to rehearse on stage, and then on the next day we had the show. So that was that was nice and relaxed. I think we played through the through the whole set at least once before the show. Yeah. Um, the day before and then then played the show and yeah it it felt very very good from from the beginning and and uh, um yeah i felt like uh, i was uh, prepared i was confident with my skills and confident with everything the guys were guys were so helpful and welcoming and and uh, yeah everything felt to kind of uh, click and yeah. and uh, fall fall in the right place so so it was really nice and then and i think that as well because people super already welcomed you as well the fan because that's what can you you can read in the comment you know when there was the announcement and the, the video and the whatsoever going on youtube on the sport, social media and when there is such a good response as well for the fan i mean we do not care what people say that's okay but when it's a good response even from you know the old mega fan, you know like older the previous generation before so let's say the first wave of bay area trash metal bay area etc it's a beautiful thing or the the, the colleagues of the music in scene it's a beautiful thing because uh so we can say to the young to the youth don't stop fucking dreaming don't stop this never is never too late <laughs> so but of course you mentioned a tool before so what about today about so today now we're speaking about what's going on with Megadeth. So you are in Megadeth, okay? You're inside, so you're f- officially there. So we will just make the journey, basically, the autobiography of Temu. <laughs> so we are you're in Megadeth, and uh, what's your planning? So you're planning a tour that where are, where it's gonna be headed headed. Yeah, so we have a lot of plans actually now in the work. So um, for just just now in a couple of days I'm, I'm flying to south america we're having a south american tour for the whole april which is going to be really exciting my first time there uh the fur- furthest i've went is uh, mexico so far which which we are going to play as well but but yeah. we're going to play a lot of places that i haven't been before so that's going to be really exciting and also knowing that uh, uh latin america south america is like very uh almost like uh almost like a home uh turf for Megadeth in a way yeah. they, they've been there so many times and have so many bands there and I've, I've seen and heard great things I'm really looking forward yeah. to that tour so we're playing a lot of countries there um starting with Lima Peru then we yeah. have uh Argentina Chile Paraguay uh, Mexico Colombia uh, El Salvador um and uh yeah it's uh it, that's gonna be a on tour for sure and then uh-huh. after that we're gonna get uh, home back for a little bit and then yeah. continue in europe for the whole june okay. so june we have a bunch of festivals around europe and also some own headlining um um like club or arena shows yeah. um in a, in a few different countries so june is going to be busy with that and then then again, home for a little bit, and then uh, and tour again. The, 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 then then another tour. We're, we're going to be doing uh, more in the states. Um, yeah. That tour is not announced yet, but we're going to have a lot of yeah. lot of lot of shows in the in the states coming up, and and then uh, hopefully also uh, getting to Asia and Australia sometime soon. You're traveling the world already, but one day you have to bring your girlfriend with you just to show her that as well. Because she has to get a piece of the of this. It's important. Don't forget. <laughs> I know those. I know that it's, sometimes it's uh, for women. You know, like being girlfriend or something is not easy. You know, because uh, the boyfriend is going out. So some show bring with with her and show the world because it's um, it's beautiful anyway. You're doing. Let's. I don't want to say at our age because we sound old, but let's say being in the, from the eighties, some somehow it's beautiful having all this thing to see all this the world with, especially with your job. Because this is your job now, and uh, 
you mentioned rat of course we don't want to go too much into the details because maybe we can go that after there will be announcement and release or something uh I, the, so they're working on new material so there will be your involvement your involvement for producing new songs material on, on megadeth yeah so right now we we have been working on getting some Okay. Some new songs to the set list, like okay. old songs that the band hasn't played in a long time, or even Ooh. some that they never played before. So that's that's been really exciting. That's um, amazing. Having have, having some uh, daily yeah. calls now lately with uh, Dave Mustaine going yeah. through the songs together. So that's that's really nice. Yeah. Um, and then once we get together on the tour, I think to, and then we're gonna start uh, talking about some riff ideas and and putting putting some ideas together. And I mean, let's, let's see what happens some your riff in the music history that's i think uh and you see this is like you know get working together like i said working together with them and this shows the being humble of such an icon a legend that's uh that's i think not many people in the music whatsoever seem being big they wouldn't do that they would maybe put you would you i don't know with other people with sound engineer but being him that shows that yeah you got picked up for one. I mean, it's my favorite band in trash metal. Don't be offended, anyone in the world, to be honest. But you've been picked up one one of the best. For me, it's the best because the the music they have is unique. As the voice of Dave is fucking unique. That as well. The history they make and the story now. You, the history you will make with them because it's a, it's a new chapter. It's a new chapter with you, and of course, there's gonna be played the usual song, but enjoy it all completely and enjoy especially this other south america because it's gonna be one hell of a ride <laughs> really <laughs> be prepared to be overwhelmed by fan and people asking autograph you already signed your first autograph with megan <laughs> yeah yeah i did i did punch but uh yeah i'm really looking forward to south america and i've heard like so many good things that people have been saying so yeah, yeah that's amazing so 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 tamu what can i say just uh enjoy really the, the the worldwide tour for the next month and uh, take some days as well for you to to just chill a little bit and really it was really a pleasure and uh, congratulations for because this is a big big achievement but you deserve thank it thank you so much you deserve it and uh, thanks have the rest of the day and enjoy uh switzerland until i mean this cup the last day there and greetings to your girlfriend always and thank you so much thanks for the interview it was a pleasure. Bye then.